Swapping Traders. This is a live trade video of sorts, um, not a recap, meaning that it, right now it is 401 and almost 402. But uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to take a trade, and I'll show you why. This is a really, really important thing because, you know, here's my internet. It looks fine. If I open up a web browser, everything seems to look normal. Um, same thing on my laptop. My Wi-Fi and everything seems to be working as normal. I just restarted the computer, so it's taking a bit of time to uh, open up the browser the first time. I don't know, maybe actually that's part of the issue, and I'll show you exactly what's going on. So there you can see it looks like everything is fine. But if I uh, test my internet speed, which normally tests at 120 megabytes download speed, so we're getting that here. So again, that looks normal. So that's, that checks out just fine. And then look at the upload speed. So normally it's about 5% of my download speed, like almost, you know, to the percent. It's uh, six, 6 megabytes per second or 5.99 megabytes per second. That's normal. I get that every single day. But I've been testing it this morning since about 3.40 a.m. when I start preparing for the trade day. And I haven't gotten anything above, um, basically this is like the highest and I've restarted my modem. I've restarted the computer multiple times. Um, I unplugged the modem from the wall, the coax cable, all that stuff. And uh, just so obviously what's going on is is there's an issue with my uh, internet service provider. But um, even if I go onto my account on, the, on my phone, for example, and check out the um, connection in the area, it says everything's fine. The connection to my modem is fine. So it's, it's uh, very easy to be fooled that uh, everything looks normal. Again, look at this uh, good connection over here. So everything looks normal, but um, the problem with uh, trading like this with no upload speed is that generally it's an issue with refreshing and the candles won't form properly. So let's see if I can put a few stocks on the watch list. and Hopefully we'll see that in action. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that can go on. That's way too expensive. So right now it's just those three. So go to the, over to the watch list. Put it on grid view. So this is a typical setup that I would take right here. I mean, I wouldn't enter here yet, but because it's above the high of the previous day, In the previous session. So let's see, I'll give it one more test. If I can get the upload speed that I need, I can take an entry. Otherwise, I just have to sit here and watch it go without me if it does go. Yeah, got nothing. So, generally, how that presents itself is the candles they get stuck when I refresh actually I mean it looks it looks like it's working normally the last time this happened I was having trouble um, refreshing Weevil but I still don't like that that very low upload speed there was less than one megabyte per second because your order entries are uploads so um, if I try to take a position on this stock there's no guarantee that the order is going to go through or go through quickly enough to um, get me filled where I want to. Same thing as if I get out, if I have to sell, especially if it goes against me, that's where it could become really dangerous because um, if it hits my stop loss and I trigger my order to get out, if that upload speed is very slow, then uh, there's no guarantee that I get out where I want to and could take a lot of slippage and lose a lot of money that way. But let's talk through this trade anyway. So at this point, I would not have entered. This is the pullback. I'd be waiting for a candle to make a new high. And right now the, let's see. Yeah, so we're only halfway into this one minute candle. So right now the entry would be as if this candle makes and breaks through the high of this one, which doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But just for example, the high of that candle right now is 322. So the earliest I can entry is, or enter is if this candle hits 323. 
doesn't look like it's going to happen. So notice now it's just a few seconds. So now we're going to focus on the high of this candle, which is 313. So if this thing hit 314, then I would take an entry. And it looks like it's going to because look at all that volume that came in. And man, it's a shame that my internet is not working because this looks like a easy to our trade. But you got to stick to the plan. My plan says that if uh, my uploads, my download and upload speed aren't what they normally are, then I can't trade. So it's not worth the risk. Yeah, that's not good enough. It should be up around six, and it stays there steadily. So nothing I can do except for keep checking it. But um, let's look at the screener again. Just to make sure nothing else. See, normally I have this up. Actually, I have it up on my laptop, but I'm since I'm not actually doesn't look like I'm going to take a trade. I'm going back and forth on the desktop, so you guys can see. So even though we can't take a trade, hopefully you guys can learn something from this. Uh, T I G R is also up. Yeah, here in the top three. It's just below my limit of uh, float size of 110 million shares, so that can also go on the list. And it looks like one of them has to come off the list. Uh, let's see, that's Friday. This guy's got to come off because it's no longer in the top three. Yeah, TIGR looks pretty good. It just gave an entry right there, but it would have failed. So I think on this one, I could take the uh, the next entry. I really don't have that in my plan what to do when that happens. There's the entry right there. That would have been the entry. So let's just let's just pretend that we took that one. It's very likely that I would have gotten that entry and not missed it because it would have been much more laser focused <laughs> on getting an entry. So I'm going to mark out the theoretical entry and we'll see if this trade would have worked out. So at least we're going to get some good data, not necessarily uh, a winning trade here but uh, it's always nice to know um, I mean even if it fails it fails and it's still a good a good trade but it'd be nice to see it work out as well so this is where the 2R calculator comes in handy we'll just assume that I got the best possible entry which isn't likely uh, but it is possible it didn't pop up that hard on that candle so let's just say that I got 312 would have been my ideal entry and then the low of this candle would have been Unless this candle's lower, nope, they're both the same. So 312 and 296. So right now I'd be putting that in my calculator. 312, 296, and this automatically returns my uh, profit target. Perfect risk, you know, right around five or six percent. That's where I want to be. Uh, doesn't always happen. So 344 would be where the uh, profit target is. So it's just above the high, the previous high. And right now it's flushing down against me, so I'd be very careful at this point if I was in this trade. And I would not put the profit target order out. I'm just going to mark it out. So, okay. So the, if I was in this trade, what I'd be doing right now is checking that the low was 297 and then that gives me my stop of 296 did I put that in or two yeah I did put 296 in there's an entry here on this one you can check that one as well Okay, now that's that happens sometimes. That might be my internet, but um, that happens sometimes with Weevil. Is uh, when the candle f finishes forming, it kind of changes. So that would mean that if I was in the stock on this candle, my stop loss would be the low of the entry candle, which it still doesn't look like it's that um, high of a risk. So let's see, eighteen twenty. So let's say I got an eighteen twenty five, and the low is seventeen ninety nine. So the target would be 1877. 
All right. So right now I would definitely be focused on this one here because um, it looks like it's going to stop me out. And I would have my hands on the hotkeys. I have my hotkeys set up um, on Weeble. The hotkeys coincide with the uh, with the hot buttons. So you can see here, um, right now they're set to use about 10% of my total account value to uh, get into trades. And then I sell, uh, you know, and buying at the ask, which is where the sellers are. That's what the ask means. And you need to buy from sellers, not buyers. <laughs> That's the bid. So buying the bid doesn't make any sense. And uh, the selling at the bid does make sense because the bid is where buyers are, people bidding on the stock. So think of it like a, uh, a car auction. And if you're sitting um, on the auction floor, you're in the audience, you're watching a car go across the auction block, what are you interested in? You're interested in what the seller is asking for the vehicle, right? Uh, is asking price. So that's how you can remember what it, which, which is the bid and which is the ask. The ask is the price that the seller wants to get for the car or the stock in this case. And the bid is what the people in the audience are bidding on the car to buy it, right? So, um, so can you imagine if you were in an auction, you're in the audience, you're, you and some other guy are trying to buy the same car, but instead of offering your money to the, the seller, you, you turn to him and you say, I want to buy that car from you. And that's buying from the bid, which makes no sense whatsoever because that guy doesn't own the car yet. So... <laughs> So that's why people don't get filled when they buy the bid and they do sometimes because the price can fall and then what happens is the ask price now becomes what the bid price was that's the, that's the only reason that works some of the time but logically it doesn't make any sense so there we would have gotten stopped out so that would have been a losing trade and we can figure out now this one looks like it's gonna win and let's see what the risk is on these Ooh. So this debt, this is not going to outweigh my loser for sure. But, you know, all my, um, my entries and exits are always based on the chart. And it's just unfortunate. Sometimes that happens where you, uh, where your, uh, risk on one trade is, is so different than the other. But I'm just looking now I'm looking over. Oh yeah, this is still, this is number two on the list. So this, this trade is almost guaranteed to win, but it's not going to wipe out this loser but it still would you know it, it will take back some of the the loss because basically I'm gonna make about three percent on this trade and I'm losing five percent on that trade so it still would be a very small red day and I would stop at this point if this yeah here I'm gonna get filled there's 1877 1879 definitely got filled on that trade so this is where it would stop and um, I, well, I can calculate roughly how much uh, I would have won and lost because so the entry price here is uh, 312 and I would divide that by my $64 that I trade with. So that gives me the number of shares, so basically 20 shares. And let's say I lo lost uh, 32 cents. Of course, there could be some slippage, but this is just to give us a rough idea. So I would have lost $6.40 on that trade, but I would have been shooting for $12 and uh, something. Uh, $12.80 and then on this trade let's see here uh, the entry is 1825 so 64 divided by 1825 is uh, three shares it's 3.5 so that it would only be three shares so um, three times uh, 52 cents because it would be twice the risk yeah we had dollar 56 minus the 640 well, six forty minus a dollar fifty six would be a uh, red day of about four dollars and eighty four cents. But that happens, and uh, you know, trading has definitely been been uh, tricky this this month, or at the end of this month, really. Let's look at the spreadsheet real quick while I've got you guys. Hopefully, at least you learned something about the bid and the ask, because I know that is such a confused topic. Um, let's see what this. So on a day like this, you know, I'll just put a note on the spreadsheet that we didn't take. We didn't take any trades yesterday either, but that was for a different reason. There were no setups, not like today. 
and uh, you can watch that video if you'd like to. The other thing, so since we're talking about things that are often confused by newer traders, beside the bid and the ask, the other thing that is very commonly confused is what what does short mean and what does long mean. Um, people usually figure this out pretty quickly, but if you're like brand new to trading, you might think that going long on a stock or having a long position on a stock means that you're holding it for a long time like a swing trade or an investment and going short on the stock means that you're holding it for a short time that's not true at all going long on a stock means that you're taking a position for the stock to uh, increase in price like this both of these are long positions uh, and it doesn't matter if they last seconds or minutes or hours or days they're a long position because you want the price to increase that's just the lingo that was established I don't know way back when and um, if you want if you want to make money off the, sh the stock price going down which means you sell shares that you don't own you're borrowing shares from the broker and when the price goes down and hits your profit target so all these lines would be basically in reverse um, and you wouldn't want to take shorts on these setups but um, then you would be in a short position that's just the the lingo that's what it means you can look it up on investopedia that's a great resource so I'm just going to put a little note here on the spreadsheet that uh, unable to take a trade due to internet issues. I actually have that built into my plan that says that the very first thing I do, I read my plan every day, that's really important. Um, the very first thing that I do in the plan is check my internet connection. And if I don't see what I normally see, then I don't trade. And as simple as that um, so and I'll put a little note that uh, looks like it would have been a red day one winner one loser so usually when I have one winner and one loser I end up green that happened earlier this week um, but it's not a guarantee but that's basically why you know I trade to our all or nothing uh, but the problem or I should say like when that doesn't work out is when you get a setup like this where the risk is so low even though it was interesting because if you remember back earlier in the video I thought the stop loss was going to be here which would have been even lower risk and even less you know of a win probably would have been about 0.75 percent and then over here uh, you know I would have it, or sorry when I was just watching this pop up um, but here with this more extended risk it was still very low risk and not enough to wipe out this trade but that's the way that um, my trading plan is designed and more often than not it'll work out where the one winner will wipe out one loser pretty easily so uh, but either way I just stick to the plan and um, we'll see how things work in the long run so far so good even though this looks like wow there's so much red on this uh, spreadsheet I'm not doing very well I'm actually up uh, almost nine percent this month and uh, yeah red week this week but hey that's okay it doesn't really matter all that matters is at the end of the month and the end of the year that you're green these fluctuations are normal just think about it like a stock uh, if you saw like a stock going up one green bar two green bars three green bars and then a pullback on one red bar that's like a perfect setup to go long right that's not something that's not a bad thing so um, if your spreadsheet fluctuates a little bit like these stocks do then don't worry about it because that's that's normal that says you're doing something right so um, all right so yeah I mean the win percentage is only like 55 percent but again trading two R theoretically uh, one winner should wipe out two losers and uh, generally that happens I'm gonna calculate exactly you know like my average loser and average winner at the end of the month just so we know how close we're getting to that theoretical uh, 2R and uh, we'll see but it looks pretty good so far because I'm I'm near uh, a 50% win rate yet I'm up about 9% on the month so we must be doing something right so anyway hopefully this video was helpful to you sorry I wasn't able to take a trade but like I said, I have to stick to my plan and strategy. I cannot be tempted by what these stocks are doing and try to take a risky entry without a good internet connection. That's really the backbone of your your trading system is your internet connection. It does, you can have the best platform in the world, but if your internet connection isn't there, you, you, it's obvious what's going to happen. So let me know what you think, and um, hopefully 
again, we cleared up some confusion on some of the lingo used in the uh, trading. Um, and again, you know, look at my buttons. I don't really use this one. The last, uh, you know, you should just ignore that. Um, but the only reason I have this buy 100 is if I'm trading a penny stock, meaning not, not, not like a $5 below. That's again, that's another misconception is the formal definition of a penny stock is anything with a price of $5 or lower. But, um, what I mean is that one that's trading, uh, below a dollar, then you have to buy 100 shares just to uh, take a position. And I almost, I haven't used that at all this month, but that's what that's there for. So my two main buttons are, are these two right here. That's all that I use. And even if you hover over them, it tells you, look, I'm, I'm buying with $64 at the ask, but it says it's a limit buy, right? And then at the ask, that just means that it, that's where it sets the limit price. So, um, that's it. So if you go up here and you see the ask right now is $3 and two cents. So if I clicked buy, it would put in an order at that price. Uh, and then the offset plus three cents. So whatever the ask is, so it would be a limit of 305 and uh and that's it simple as that then sell um at the bid minus five cents so there's the bid 294 so 289 it would it would it just gives you a window if the if you try to sell and you hit the uh, sell button when it's at 294 and let's say it's during a flush and the price is moving down see it like it's moving down right now it's going to give you five cents of kind of a wiggle room to continue to get you out instead of just skipping over your order and now you're stuck in the stock as it continues to go down. So that's what that's all about. So hopefully that clears some things up and uh, I'd like to always leave you guys with always take your stop losses no matter what, always honor your profit target and you should be green in the long run. Take care.